So I literally just completed our complete greenhouse, fully automated irrigation system, complete with five zones, drip irrigation, pot drippers, full Wi-Fi connectivity, timers. This is literally gonna save me 30 minutes a day, seven days a week for the rest of my life. Maybe I can leave the farm for more than a day at a time without the whole place falling apart. Let me show you how I did it. So like literally all of my projects, this took longer than I figured. I would say, you know, sneaking away to work on it um, over the course of about a week, I probably got 20 to 25 hours in the complete system. So where do I start? So when I poured the concrete, I had put in some half inch PEX lines and I ran those all over the place thinking that I would use that for drip irrigation. What I ended up doing is kind of directional drilling underneath my uh, sidewalk to get some more three quarter inch lines for the drip irrigation. So the drip irrigation is a true three quarter inch everywhere. And I utilized all of my PEX lines that I had previously put in the concrete for all of my kind of garden hose spigot systems. So I just got cheap garden hoses. Um, and this way I'm not tripping over garden hoses. So to make that, you just needed some PEX fittings. Uh, it's half inch PEX and I, they didn't have an all-in-one system for a valve. So I made my own standard uh, I, I like the quarter turn because uh, the other ones might, the twist ones might get seized up, but make your own system. Yeah, it's very secure on there, so nobody's ever gonna rip it off. And I literally put one, two, three, four, five, six uh, small hoses everywhere. So these are gonna be used for the few things that the full, fully automatic drip irrigation system isn't gonna cover. So for some of our plant racking, and in one area of the greenhouse that is essentially just uh, our starter plants and things, and you can't really do a drip irrigation or automatic system with that. But the rest of the entire greenhouse is fully automatic. So by just getting cheap garden hoses, like literally made the dollar store my friend, I think each little 15 foot hose was $11 at Home Depot or something. Now I'm not tripping over hoses. And I strategically put those kind of at corners so I can drag the hose this way or that way. And very easily, uh, it's not a big long hose with a long hose reel, just throw it over the uh, hose holders and it's all cleaned up, no tripping over anything. So that is just on a simple PEX manifold that's all connected together and I can either run that. I made a very versatile um, kind of manifold system I designed kind of myself after really thinking it through. So my gravity feed water is not enough pressure really to run a drip irrigation system. Uh, it's just, just not enough PSI that you need and very minimal, but it does let a little bit water go through for like a single hand sprayer, but not very much. But I did in my manifold that I built, um, put it for gravity pressure. You can just run or you can turn that off and run it to this cheap little pump. So this pump is from Viver. Viver sent me a pump to give it a try. It's the smallest pump that I happen to have on the farm. I have a couple other big ones, like a, I think they call it a cabin kit, but it's a large one horsepower with a pressure tank and a pressure switch all in. And I'm gonna save that for my pond and outdoor kind of fair weather pump hose system. If I do a, a pump hose system with my pond outside, I also left openings that I could run the system on that. So it can run on gravity, it can run on this little pump that's coming from water up here. I can turn that, unplug the pump, and down here I have this to my well pump and pressured farm water system. So if I run out of water up there, 
I can switch it to that. In the summertime when the greenhouse requires a lot of water and if I do future greenhouses and do a big pump pumping from the dugout outside as my main watering system, I can literally, literally tie it in and uh, have that outside pond pump work the entire irrigation system in the greenhouse. But this little Weber, Weber pump I got is literally like $94 US on Amazon. It's 800 watts um, and it's surprising how much it pumps, but it didn't come with a pressure switch on it. So I bought a really good pressure switch and simply wired it in. So I cut the cord, ran the cord into the pressure switch and then out again. So whenever it calls for water now, the pump turns on before, without that pressure switch, the pump is just on all the time. So whenever I open up a hose, whenever a drip system turns on, the pump just fires up and it's very quiet. So a cheap little pump like that, I'm gonna really put it through the test. It's gonna, gonna work pretty hard. But if the pump does conk out, it's very, very easy. I built the system with quick clamps, I can take that pressure regulator off, or the pressure switch off and put it on any other pump that I want, whether cheap, expensive. Actually, this little pump, if I could find another one smaller, I could probably get by with an even smaller than this teeny tiny little uh, garden pump. So that's really cool. So here I've got 10,000 liters and it doesn't seem to rain in Saskatchewan, Canada anymore. But I, so there's no rush to getting my, uh, uh, rainwater collection hooked up um, but in theory I'm going to be hooking up this that'll be in another video to collect with rainwater and then it's gravity the pump is always primed or I can just try to run gravity through the entire system it won't be enough for the drip irrigation but it will be enough for kind of a few spigots and stuff like that so if I don't want gravity, I turn this off and this one's to the pump. So the water's coming into the pump and this pressure switch, when it calls for water, turns on and this valve is open. So this, this one runs to the drip irrigation system. We put a pressure regulator on it and we also put this little inline filter for the drip irrigation. I don't want any possibility of crud uh, clogging up the drip lines. For the rest, I don't really care. Uh, this other valve goes to, uh, switches to from three quarter inch poly to three quarter inch PEX into the manifold and out to half inch that I had run in my, before I poured the concrete. I ran them all the way over. So I got a couple here, one over there, uh, a few over there. And I also ran a water line from my farm uh, well system that runs like our house and shop and everything. And that's off. So if I, if I run out of water in the rainwater collection tanks, or if I don't feel like using this pump, I have a backup. I simply turn that valve off and turn that one on and it back feeds and runs the entire system. I also left two open. What I'm going to be getting is once my siding is done on the outside, punching out a frost protected valve with a hose on the outside. So if I run it from this system or the well system, I can have water and a hose outside. On the other hand, I can back feed my system here with the outside pump for the pond and my outside irrigation system and if we get more greenhouses in the future. So this is very versatile for resilience to be able to water the entire greenhouse with multiple options. Now the best and easiest would be rainwater collection. Plants really like the, the softness of rainwater. But if I have to continue with the well, or if I have to fill these up with the well, there's another thing too, I can just turn this on and this valve on and I can, my well pump will fill these tanks if I want. What I might do is put a, a safety, uh, kind of like a toilet plunger or a, a valve and hook another line up to my well pump so this always has a little bit of water that if I'm not around and it doesn't rain, 
the pump's not going to run dry or something. So that is something that I might still do. This pump is just 800 watts, this little Viver pump. Um, so I'm, I'm considering getting an even smaller one than this one, but it's super light and I just put it on some uh, sh simple s shelf brackets and it's also super quiet. So it just sits on there and I secured it with uh, just some clops on there so it's nice and nice and secure. Now for this big manifold system, I just got a sheet of 5 8 spruce uh, plywood, cut it to a size that was going to work for the size of the manifolds that I made, and painted it a nice white and secured it to the wall. So when I do finish my the rest of my metal on the inside of the greenhouse, I will just put a trim and go around that. At the bottom I put some puck board and uh, then I have some trunk lines screwed to the building that go to each zone. So one zone is this in in ground zone is one and also plant drippers. So I, I ran uh, this is half inch drip line. The emitters are 12 inches apart and I did 16 inch on center. Uh, they said 18 inches was probably okay, but me being a carpenter and uh, 16 inches is great. So when this zone turns on, it's the half inch drip lines and this whole zone gets wet, but I also tied a three quarter inch pipe to over here uh, so that I didn't, cause I got a sidewalk to deal with. So this is on the same zone to water these pots. My next zone is the front raised bed. I put the same dripper uh, drip system, so 12 inch spacing, but I put them a little close together and I put this on a separate zone. The reason for that is raised beds always require a lot more water than anything else. And uh, so this is gonna probably run the most out of everything in the greenhouse. The next zone is goes around the main perimeter all the way around the edge of the concrete. And that's for my pot dripper system. So the pot drippers uh, are on a separate zone. And so I can load this up with flower pots like I have now. And everything is watered for flower pots. So that means everything in the greenhouse is watered except for this kind of area over here. And if I have some rackings like this, and that's why I have my, all of my little hoses kind of underneath uh, the greenhouse that I put. Uh, the next two zones are in the main part of the greenhouse. Now, if you're familiar with my design in the greenhouse, uh, the winter sun, goes all the way to the back and the whole greenhouse is sunny in the short winter days. But in the heat of the summer, the sun only is half of this bed. So instead of running north to south, I decided to run east to west and split it into two zones. Full sun is gonna require more water and not full sun is gonna require less water. So I can control it. This one might run two or three times as much as back here. So that's why I split it up that way. That plant dripper system comes along the entire perimeter of the greenhouse here. And I think this bed is 30 something feet long and just go all the way to the end. So this is kind of the controller for the entire drip irrigation system. It's ran by this rain bird. Here's the model. There is six zones to it. And then you can add, which I did, this Wi-Fi module. So in the greenhouse, I have ethernet and high-speed internet out to this, which also covers kind of my pond area and stuff outside and this side of the farm, but also the entire greenhouse. So full Wi-Fi connectivity. So in here, uh, this is a manifold that you can get. So, so there's an O-ring in some of them, and you also have to use Teflon for some of the other ones. But these are the controllers. So each one has two wires. One wire goes to the common, and the other wire goes to the zone, 
in the Rainbird system. So I currently have five zones and I can put a six zone if I decide to do some hanging basket ripper zone or something is what I'm thinking in the future. But you simply just put all of these together and when the controller calls, it opens a valve. And this controller with the Wi-Fi, it's a simple Rainbird app you download and you can fully control it from anywhere in the world. So I'm gonna have essentially summer settings that's gonna require a lot of water and then winter settings um, for when the greenhouse doesn't require a whole lot of water. And it was very simple to set up. So it take, uh, took a little while to make everything this clean with the proper manifolds, uh, a lot of bench work and planning. But uh, so all of the pecs that was previously in the concrete tried to make that beautiful. And all three quarter inch uh, trunk lines, poly trunk lines. So these go underground. And again, I drilled through the sidewalk to get three separate pipes for the zones here. And everything is a three quarter inch trunk line and all of the drip lines is half inch drip lines with 12 inch emitters, 16 on center and a little closer in the raised bed. For securing the trunk lines really good so they're not all over the place, I decided and I went to a local metal scrap yard and bought some copper for $6 a pound is with kind of grade A copper. So half inch copper pipes about two feet are my main pegs, and then uh, decent gauge copper wiring that I picked through. Now I decided to do copper uh, because I kind of went down the rabbit hole of electroculture. So I had bought some landscaping pegs, they're called, and the pegs that you get to hold down drip lines are made of iron or steel or even galvanized and they're not long enough anyways for my kind of light soil so I got everything copper I spent about hundred and twenty dollars altogether on scrap copper and have some to spare but the idea is with electroculture that'll be a future video is that along the drip lines I can run a light gauge copper wire and tie it into all my copper pegs and then run that and ground it outside to possibly make an antenna like the electroculture people do. But that is a story for another day. So I have dealt quite a bit with a dr light gauge drip tape that I use for some of my outside stuff. And it's very similar fittings and valves that you can get. The drip tape, you actually drill a little hole in the trunk line and just kind of pop in and you know, you'll have leaks all over the place with the little fittings. For a more permanent system, you get the more heavier gauge or heavier walled uh, half inch drip line. So I'm hoping that this lasts for uh, decades type of thing. Decades of very little maintenance on it. And instead of punching a hole in the trunk line, you actually cut uh, to make 16 foot on center. You, I measured it and everything. 14 and three quarter inch pieces of uh, three quarter inch black poly pipe and then put a T fitting that's three quarter to a half inch threaded and you probably don't have to Teflon tape but I Teflon taped kind of everything might as well Teflon tape is cheap when you're doing it anyways and then for running the drip lines you I put in all of those copper pegs to kind of hold it in position so I can pull it rather tight and you pull it all the way down to the other end, leave yourself a little bit, and they have just a simple figure eight that you uh, fold the hose over, have the figure eight on, and then you can also utilize that figure eight to tie it. So I used some just standard zip ties and tied it so everything's nice and taut, and it's not gonna be moving on me, it's all fixed in location. Um, I also got some copper rebar ties that uh, actually the local Hutterites use on food bags. So if they have four chickens in a bag, they use a rebar tie and food grade, like real pure copper ties to tie the bag. 
and that's how they do all their meat. So me getting into some butchering and stuff, I bought a whole roll of that. And when I get into electroculture as well, I might use those ties around every drip line to secure and kind of ground all together all of the copper pegs and drip line systems. So I'm really excited about my zone for drippers into pots. Uh, so again, it's three quarter inch poly trunk line around the entire perimeter of my concrete where any pots that I might have would go. So we have some fruit trees in pots, peppers in pots, mint in pots, ginger, bananas, other things. And pots are like a raised bed. They're gonna dry out quite quickly. So I put that on its own separate zone that's going to probably run uh, quite a bit often just like the raised bed in front. So these little drippers uh, that you get, you get a little tool that simply punches right into the three quarter inch line. And then I, you wanna keep all your drippers system the same. You don't want a bunch of different ones. So we got uh, you know all, all the same. You put colored side down. I actually made myself, cause my hands were getting really sore. Uh, the three quarter inch pipe that I have is a little bit heavier walled to push it with my hands they were getting super sore so I made myself a tool out of an old I think my grandfather's old broken ball peen hammer uh, I simply drilled a hole in the end of it so I didn't wreck the dripper and then I can use that to push them in so with that little tool you go along punch uh, put the drippers in and then I cut uh, all of the little tiny uh, white line for the drippers all the same length and at the end of it is just a little plastic thing that actually puts the water right down into wherever you put the little plastic peg securely in the dirt in the pot super awesome system so this half inch drip line is a little bit heavier walled than a drip tape but it comes on a great big roll and me, I have some electrical rolling out equipment because so I have tools for everything. But I made one uh, work with just a piece of rebar and I could easily roll it out. So I just line it up with where I need it. Now, this was a major pain in the butt having foliage and trying to do a drip irrigation system. Do your drip line before you have it all planted. So it literally added three times, maybe four times the amount of time to slowly pull them through along the ground underneath the foliage to get it in a straight line. And also while not trampling plants and uh, squishing them with the drip line, like having the drip line go over top of a stem of one of my wife's flowers and destroy it. So that was a big pain in the rear end. Um, having foliage so if you're building a greenhouse or doing a system anyways i highly suggest you know get the right soil mulch it put the drip irrigation system in and and then plant um, so some of our planting schemes it's kind of sporadic in here but we're going to start planting east to west so in the summertime when things grow really fast we're going to do tomatoes and peppers and I, I'll do another video when I get to my, my string lines and system of hanging actually copper wire I'm gonna be doing instead of twine down for tomatoes and things to grow up. But uh, having the drip system this way and having my rows this way, and then in the back in the summertime when it's shaded, I can grow different things like maybe spinaches and lettuce. Lettuce doesn't require full sun and lettuce I believe will thrive at the back, but to be able to put full runs. But for now, we've just kind of got sporadic things, even rows running kind of south to north, And but I'm not gonna pull all the plants. We're just kind of, kind, kind of adjust as we harvest and as we do things. So with the half inch drip irrigation, it's just, you kind of shove it on the valve and I did get valves. So if for some reason I don't have, happen to have part of the greenhouse planted in the future, I can turn off every single line of the drip. So a couple extra bucks to get, get a valve on each one, but it allows me the versatility for in the future for whatever I'm doing. 
but essentially you just shove on the half inch drip, cut it to, to, to length, shove it on and twist, twist it and it's watertight. Then at the other end, it's that simple figure eight, uh, pull it tight with a zip tie or even one of those copper uh, rebar ties to the other end. And whatever I'm tying it to, I have it staked with like two foot deep half inch pipes. So nothing is gonna be moving on me. It's solid and gonna be here for 20 years. Up until now, I had just been using these pipe clamps that aren't the cheapest things either for all of my three quarter inch systems, outside, inside, in the greenhouse, everything. But uh, uh, Southern Irrigation showed me there's a new tool and a pair of pliers for crimp on um, that are a little bit cheaper. Uh, I did anywhere that was kind of permanent and I know is never gonna change, I used those cheaper crimp on. It's much faster as well. Anything that I might adjust, like a lot of things on my manifolds and things, I just use the pipe clamps. So if I have to change out a pump, I'll just get my heat gun out, heat up the line, undo the pipe clamp, simply take it out of the barbs, do my adjustments, cut different length of pipes and put pipe clamps on. So those I can take off easily. The clamps that are a little bit cheaper, you can't, uh, can't, it, it, they aren't very versatile. So it's only in permanent systems, I would use that. So again, new to the city by me is Southern Irrigation. It's my new one-stop shop for everything irrigation. They have small stuff, like this is actually all small stuff in, in our greenhouse. Big stuff, one of the owners came out and like came out to the greenhouse. We walked around, we planned it out. He gave me the best ideas, recommendations, zone sizes, pump sizes, types of filters, types of drip lines, the spacing of the emitters, the type of soil that I have. So for a project this size, they actually came out and custom designed my entire system, showed me how to do it. They're, uh, they're great. So. Prior to them, I would go to a farm and garden place and get some, you know, they'd have drip tape and a few valves, but they wouldn't have a good deal on trunk line. And then I have accounts at other plumbing wholesalers, you know, uh, tax exempt farm accounts and things where I'd get some of my main fittings and my PEX fittings and things like that. But Southern Irrigation, they kind of had it all in one spot. So I believe they've got a few locations across Western Canada, a new location, I believe they said even in Ontario. But I'll put links in the description. And if you happen to have uh, Southern Irrigation close to where you live, I highly recommend it. Uh, no complaints. And it's my new go-to shop. There is a story in one of Robert Kiyosaki's books. He's the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I forget which book it is, but in the beginning, it was talking about investing, actually, but um, it's in relation to this. There was a town that didn't have any water supply, and the water source was a long, long ways away. So there was two guys. The first guy, he got it in his old truck and got a bunch of buckets. And he went down to, drove to the river and hauled back water for the, the, the people of that town. The other guy, he took his time, kind of made a plan, got a system, got some investors and things. And he set up a pipeline, essentially from the water source to the town and hook up people in the town with water. So he took his sweet time and set it up. Now, when he had that set up, the guy with the truck and the the buckets of water, he couldn't keep up. What he did is he got another truck and more buckets and hired his kids and ended up working seven days a week instead of just five and having to lower his prices where it wasn't feasible to do anymore. And all he did is work, work, work. And the guy that set it up properly and took his time and built a pipeline and a system and put infrastructure in place, he wins in the end. So. My whole strategy, again, is building proper infrastructure, putting that infrastructure in place. I don't care how long it takes me. Now this irrigation system, like it cost a little over a couple thousand dollars for the entire uh, 3,000 square foot fully automated irrigation system in the greenhouse, but I spent it. I spent a whole week uh, kind of part-time 
uh, well, a lot of time planning and then a lot of time installing and my fingers are sore and I'm sore. And now I can have the ability to put my feet up if I want. I'm not going to, I just work on the next project, but it's in place and set up the, the timing system and I literally do nothing. In a greenhouse like this, it's, uh, it's just a food producing machine now, like f fully automatic. It's awesome. We don't even have weed pressure in here. I don't have to blow out the sprinklers. I don't have to blow out the drip line system. Like if I did something like this outside, you have to haul in pumps, haul out pumps, blow out lines, get the air compressor out, blow everything out. Uh, every year you're gonna have some water in there and cracked something in it. This year round, I don't have to do anything. Once it's set, it's just a food producing machine. And uh, that's what I want. It took a long time to get here and a lot of planning, but uh, it's been uh, really fun and totally worth it. So again, in uh, the last thing I would wanna do is hire an employee as well. If I can do it with essentially automation and robotics, I just go directly there, right? So I spent a week and a couple grand and that saves me 30 minutes a day for the rest of my life, seven days a week, it's done, right? In ground is the best way to grow food. So drip irrigation system, instead of hydroponics, I will take in ground food any day of the week. It tastes better. Living soil, heavy mulched and no till. So a drip system like this, there's no weed pressure to worry about. You do some hand weeding and no rototilling. It's heavy mulch system. So this drip irrigation system isn't going to be disturbed and moved and lifted up and put aside and put back like I have to do with some of our outside stuff, right? The weeds get too bad. I pull the entire drip tape system up, till it or add wood chips or whatever I'm doing or get a machine in and then try to put the whole irrigation system back. And it's just a person could waste their whole life doing that. So. This is kind of one and done and uh, super versatile. As I expand, if I want, uh, like right here is literally the only place all my wife's plants and trays and racks and a couple fruit trees on this wall. I could run a, uh, can tie into this trunk line, run it up and over the concrete to do some drips over there but this would literally take us two minutes to water what needs to be done every day instead of 30 for the whole greenhouse. Well, I hope I covered it all um, and that helped you out with maybe some of the systems you're planning on doing. I highly suggest put in that infrastructure in place, spend the money on the timers, spend the money on the Wi-Fi controller, spend the money on a good system install it properly don't do it half-assed and it is totally worth it like comment subscribe uh, let me know what you think let me know if that was helpful and thank you very much for watching we'll catch you next time tina's on a vacation for one day won't need the neighbors to come over there's so many things i would have to say I like my soil a little bit moister I don't want to lose my pots tonight I can't afford to lose my pots tonight I don't have many friends left to talk to I'm always stuck here in the greenhouse You know that I could grow anything for you Just have to make sure there's enough moisture and my sincerest apologies.